Michelle from Birdcage and Thread here with a hack for the large size retreat bag by Emmeline Bags. This tutorial is an adaptation of the original free pattern which can be downloaded from emmelinebags.com. This bag uses the large style B frames which can also be purchased at emmelinebags.com and I'll put a link in the description box below. For this large size, the pattern states that one yard of interfacing is required. However, this should be one and a half yards, so just note that when you're gathering your supplies. This great bag eliminates the zipper and makes use of the emmeline bag's sturdy frames to form the handles. You can also customise the size of the opening. Just remember that it needs to accommodate a fist, so just keep that in mind if you decide to make the opening smaller. This sized opening was designed so that the bag can be carried over the arm. The closure is also customisable to suit whatever you have on hand, even if it's only fabric. This one has a loop and a tie made using just a spaghetti strap, and I used a hex nut for decoration. There are lots of YouTube tutorials on how to make spaghetti straps like this. Other suggestions include just ties, or you can make either a crossover tab or a single tab with a magnetic snap or a cam snap to close. Whatever you choose, you're the designer, and most importantly, enjoy making this fun bag. So grab your supplies and let's get started. So to begin this hack, you're going to cut your fabrics the same size as it's written in the pattern for the large retreat bag. So in other words, you're going to have two outer pieces that have fleece and interfacing and two lining pieces that are interfaced. Then you're going to cut two strips of fabric 18 and a half inches wide by one and three quarter inches high. You'll also need the style B frames, the large frames, from emmelinebags.com. The only other thing you need to think about is a closure. You can leave it out altogether if you like. Um, you could use two ties, just sew the ties into the bag itself, or you can use tabs. You can use a double tab where they cross over each other and use a, either a magnetic or a cam snap. You can use a single tab to, so it flips over the bag and again magnetic or cam snap closure. But I'm just doing a loop on one side and the other side will be a tie where that will just loop through there like that. But that's totally up to you. So now we're going to mark the cutouts of the handle at the top of the bag. So take one of your outer pieces and just as a note, mine is directional so this is the top which is where I'll be marking. So make sure that you're marking at the top and not at the bottom. So I'll flip that over so that the wrong side is facing up. Then you're going to find the center of that top raw edge there. I'm just going to place a pin, but you could mark it with a pen or a small notch. And then again, place it wrong side up on your work surface. Then from that center point, you're going to mark either side of that three inches out. So three inches that side and three inches that side from the center point. Then from those marks, you're going to measure two inches down and draw a line. But just make sure that your line is going straight down or parallel with the short sides. So again, that's two inches. And then I'll come over to the other point and mark the same. So you should have something like this. Then you're going to get a dinner plate. It's just an ordinary dinner plate. And place that over the two vertical lines there, just so you can see the tip of each of those lines. Then from one line to the other, just trace around that plate, like that. Now you have marked your cut lines, so you're going to cut along those lines 
Then you're going to repeat that with the other outer piece and the two lining pieces. So now you've done the handle cutouts, we're going to add whatever closure that you want to add. So find the centre of this curved edge here, which I've marked with a pin, and you can just do that by folding it in half. Then on that centre point, you're going to place the closure that you've chosen, whether it's a, a fabric tab or a tie, or in my case, I'm doing a loop with a tab. So I'll centre that and just hold that in place with the wonder clip. Then you're going to place the corresponding lining piece right sides together, lining up that curved raw edge and these vertical raw edges here. Then you're just going to clip that in place. I'll replace this clip holding the tab in place and just continue clipping around the edge. Then with a quarter inch seam allowance, sew a seam around this raw edge here. Then repeat that with the other outer piece and the other lining piece. So now you've sewn around this handle cutout, we're going to cut into each of the corners cutting close to the stitching but careful not to cut through it. So in both of those corners there, then you're just going to cut slits around the curved edge here. There's no need to cut V notches because these, this corner will splay, the fabric once you turn it the other way will splay outwards. So just cut slits, again not all the way to the stitching but just close. Just cut all the way around that curve, about every half an inch or so, doesn't need to be accurate. Then you turn that right side out and press it down. And then you're going to top stitch it. I have my other one here where it's been top stitched and turned right side out. And you can see I've sewn the loop into the the cut out there. Now I'm going to cut out the corners. The reason I didn't do that at first is now it's sewn both together I can cut out both the lining and the outer corners together at once. So do that now after you've top stitched, pressed and top stitched around there and do that for the other piece as well. So this is what you should have now. The handle cut out and top stitched uh, just a note about top stitching, make sure the tab or the loop that you have isn't caught in the top stitching here. Make sure it's free of that. Then you've got the bottom corners cut out and you'll have two of those. Then you're going to place those right sides together so that the outers are matching. Then you're going to fold the lining out the way. on both sides like that. Then you're going to line up the two sides and the bottom. And just place pins or wonder clips along those seams there. Then with a quarter inch seam, you're going to sew down the one side, across the bottom and across the other side there. Now that you've sewn these three sides, we're going to box the corners. Just as you, it indicates in the pattern, you're going to line up those seams there. 
and you're going to sew across there with a quarter inch seam and then reinforce that with an eight inch seam to say you've got two lines of stitching and it makes it a bit more sturdy in those corners. So again you're lining up those two seams there and open out your uh, seams there just to reduce some bulk. Now we have the outer sewn, so we've got the sides, the bottom and the corners done. We're going to do exactly the same thing on the lining. So we're going to line up the sides. You can open out your bag to make it a bit easier and just make sure you don't get these top seams mixed up. So you're going to line up the side seams like that. Just make sure you come to a corner, that L-shaped corner there like that. That will ensure that you've got the side, you're catching the side, not the top. So keep going around, but this time we don't need to leave a gap in the lining. So just keep going along the bottom, all the way across. And you can see I cheated, I didn't use interfacing in my lining because I've got fairly heavy weight denim so it didn't need the interfacing and then up the side again if you're getting confused as to which side seam or which seam at the side you could always start the side pinning it from that L-shaped corner upwards it might make it a little less confusing and you don't catch that top end in there accidentally. So you'll, again you'll do the side, the bottom and the side and then you'll box the corners just as you did for the outer. So now you have the outer bag sewn and the lining with the corners. You're going to turn the bag right side out. You'll have a gap both sides, doesn't matter which way you turn it out, like which gap you choose, just turn it the right way out. And just gently poke the corners of the outer out. Then you're just going to tuck the lining down in the bag. And then you're going to baste along these edges here, about an eighth of an inch away from each raw edge. And don't forget to match up the side seams and open out those seams to reduce some bulk. So do that on both sides. Now you have the sides basted along these raw edges here. We're going to put the bag aside for now and we're going to work on the, the fabric strips that we cut earlier. So take the two strips to your ironing board and press both long ends in by quarter of an inch. So press that and do the same with both of them. Then you're going to place them right sides together And opening out those folds that you just made, you go and a quarter inch seam allowance, you're going to sew along this short edge here. Do that on that side and repeat the same for the other end. 
again quarter inch seam opening out those folds and sewing along that short edge there. Then you're going to take your bag and turn it so that the lining is on the outer. So that's the wrong way out now. And you're going to take the fabric loop with the folds on the long ends and the seam on the short ends and you're going to line up the short end seam here on the loop to the side seam here on your bag on the lining placing that right sides together. Then you're going to place a clip or a pin at that point and then pin or clip from that point to each end. Then you're going to do the same on the other side, so flip the loop over, just making sure that the loop's not twisted and that you're lining up the same raw edge. So just follow it along until you get to the centre points and again you're going to line up the centre of the bag with that seam in the loop. And place a clip at that point. Then just as you did the other side, go from the center out, pinning or clipping. Then take that to your machine and using a quarter inch seam, you're going to sew along this edge here until you get to the end of the bag and then the same on the other side quarter inch seam along there to the other end of the bag but just before you take it to your machine just make sure that your strip doesn't have any twists in it so now you've sewn those two seams there we're going to turn the bag back out the right way Then we're going to fold this loop back over the top and you're going to repress that fold there at the bottom then you're going to form like a binding so you're just going to cover that line of stitching that you just made to sew this together and place a clip again you just fold refold that raw edge that you pressed earlier and fold that down just so it just covers that line of stitching that you previously made and keep going all the way around then when you get to this open part here just make sure both sides are folded then you're going to meet those two folds together so that the raw edges are tucked in and the two folds meet. Then you're going to continue that around the entire bag. Now that loop is all folded down and ready to go, one thing I did want to mention was that after you've sewn this seam along here, sewing the loop to the side of the bag, make sure you press that seam open so it uh, doesn't get caught when you go to top stitch. Next you're going to top stitch on the outside of the bag, beginning from one of these side seams, but just start about an inch away from the side seam because you need to leave a gap to um, insert those uh, bag frames. So again just start here about an eighth of an inch away from the edge of that fold there 
and go all the way around the bag until you get back to this side seam here and you've got a gap of about an inch here. Now you've top stitched all the way around the bag, leaving a one inch opening here. All that's left now is to insert the frames. So make sure that the handle there is centred, or the cut out there is centred along the frame there. And then do the same with the other side. making sure that's centered. Then you're going to take a couple of stitches to close that gap there, along there. Then to close the bag just push down on the frames there and it closes like that. And this shape's a little different, it doesn't have a zipper to push outwards so it, it forms kind of a different shape. Now I'm just going to add a hex nut on the end of this here just to keep it closed. I'll just cut that edge off there. And that's the large Emmeline retreat bag hack. I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.